Hi friends, the title of my message today is called Strength for the Journey. In the scriptures that we just read, Jesus is gathered with his disciples in the upper room and he's told them some things that disturbed them. He says, I'm going to leave. Now, when you take a trip, you might say that to your friends or family, well, I'm going to leave and you have a destination in mind and then you return. And Jesus said all those things to his disciples. I'm going to leave. Of course, he knew that his trip included the cross, his suffering, his entombment, and his resurrection. And he was trying to comfort and give the disciples, his friends, strength for the journey that was ahead of them. And it wasn't going to be an easy journey. Now, a few months ago, my wife, Gail, and myself, we decided that we would take a trip. And uh, the destination of that trip was a place in Ohio where we would pick up a little puppy, and we named her Rosie. And we took along with us our grandson, Carter, and our granddaughter, Anna. And we began our trip. Now that trip wasn't always an easy trip. We got tired. We got hungry. We got frustrated. There were a lot of things. Mostly tired. But we reached our ultimate destination. And we uh, took our grandkids and went into the house. And they brought, brought out Rosie. Oh, they were so happy. They loved on her and played with her, but pretty soon it was time to go. And so we uh, returned with our new possession, our uh, little, little Rosie, our gift to Carter and Anna. But along the trip home, I heard, I heard a, a, a sudden silence in the back seat, and I turned and looked, and there was Carter sound asleep. And there was Anna sound asleep, and there was Rosie in the middle, in a little basket, sound asleep. And at that moment, I knew that what we did, that that trip was well worth it. And there were other moments along the trip where I realized that I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad. And we're all on a faith journey, whether you know it or not, you're on a faith journey. And there will be moments, a lot of frustrating and difficult moments as we've seen lately, but there will be moments when, yeah, this is worth it. This is worth it. When God comes and comes near and his blessing is upon, me, upon you. You realize that. Now, uh, you may be at a particular moment in your journey. Sometimes we call that moment a fork in the road moment. Maybe you're just realizing that you're on a faith journey and you have to decide, am I going to believe and trust Jesus or am I going to continue to go in the way of unbelief? Oh, and let me encourage you to trust Jesus. Maybe you've been on this journey a long time and that fork in the road moment is it's so hard. It's so difficult. Do I continue? Or do I just get discouraged and quit? Let me encourage you this morning. This is what I want to help you with today. That wherever you are on this journey, you can be confident of one thing. That Jesus is with you. And not only will he show you the way, but he is the way. He's the way maker and the way himself. And he will give you strength and power for the journey, the faith journey that you are on. I want to give you some tips, maybe, if you want to call them that. I'm going to call them power switches. When you go into a room at night and it's dark, you turn on the, you turn on the light switch. And it comes on and you can see. 
see clearly, see what you were looking for or what you wanted to do in the room. And so I'm gonna give you five power switches so that you can have strength for your journey. The first power switch is simply the power switch of hope. When you come to God, he gives you hope. He gives you the understanding that uh, this way, the, the life that you live, that you're living for Jesus will end in a positive way. There's a song that says, I've read the back of the book and we win. <laughs> it's good to know that the outcome is certain. Our, our outcome with Jesus and in Christ is certain with him. The second power switch that I want to give you this morning is the power switch of help. He's promised to help you. And that's through the Holy Spirit. And that's what he says in this scripture that we read this morning. He says, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. And because I live, you will live also. So he, he comes to us as the comforter, as the helper, the one who gives us what we need along the way in our lives. So the second switch, is power switch, is the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, our comforter. The Greek word for that is parakletos, which means one who is called along beside to help, and that's the Holy Spirit. Power switch number three is freedom from heaviness. Each one of these is an H, okay? So let's help you remember. Freedom from heaviness, or he lifts our burdens. We come into, it says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, that I will give you rest. So he lifts our burdens. We come to him, humble ourselves before him, and he will lift us up. So that power switch is freedom from heavy burdened, being heavy burdened. Power switch number four is assurance of heaven. That's what he told his disciples. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I come, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Heaven is a reality, it is a certainty. And one day, when this life is over, we're going to be with Jesus in heaven. There's a song that says, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see him. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race when we see Christ. And finally, power switch number five. He will give you heart. And by heart, I mean it's just another word for courage and boldness. Look at the disciples. They were scared. They were hiding inside. But when the Holy Spirit came and the power switch was turned on, they went out with boldness and shared God's word. He wants you to be bold in your faith. He will give you his power to carry out his mission. Now, Jesus sent out 70 of his followers at one point to do ministry. He told them, now, don't take anything for the journey. Don't take any money or a bag with extra clothes. Why did he tell them that? He wanted them to understand that the journey that they were on wasn't just a journey for the sake of a trip or a journey, but it was a mission that they were on. And on that mission, he wanted them to know that he would provide whatever they needed to carry out that mission. He wanted them to trust him, trust God for their needs. And they wanted he wanted them to experience God's power to provide. So that in that understanding, 
they could be bold in their faith. And the, and the scripture says they came back. And they were pumped up. They were celebrating. They said even the demons were subject to your word. Subject to us. <laughs> yes. You can have boldness. As you carry out his ministry. As I shared with the kids this morning. Your light wasn't designed to be put under a bushel but on a lampstand so everyone can see it so everyone can see God's love and you can carry out his mission into the world oh we need that message now more than ever in the world in which we live oh people are afraid people are huddled together people uh, are in a place where uh, they're, they're just gripped with despair and they need the message of Jesus that you don't have to be afraid. And he gives you these power switches to flip on the power switch of hope where he lifts you up above the trials of life and uh, assures you that, that he is going to be the victor. The power switch of help. The Holy Spirit is our comforter and our helper. The power switch of freedom from heavy burdens. We can give him our burdens and he will lift them and take them away. The power switch of the assurance of heaven. Yes, one day we'll be with him. And finally, the power switch of heart or courage and boldness to carry out his mission. This is what God has promised to do for you and me. And I'm so glad. God bless you. It's been an honor to give you God's word this morning. Now, let me offer a benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you soon.